Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good, that's a good start. We've got a smaller crowd, but that's a good uh, response. Now, we're just talking in Sunday school. We didn't have too many in Sunday school. It's supposed to be warm today, almost a, almost a spring-like day today. And uh, uh, we f I figured there'd be more people here, but we got less people. Maybe some people decided to go out and enjoy the day today instead of coming to church. I don't know, but I don't know what, you know, people do what they want to do, and we can't do anything about that, can we? Nothing we can do about that. But we're glad you guys came. Glad every one of you came. We're glad for whoever's uh, joining us here on the video today. We're glad to do that. And I'll just start out by saying that this is New Macedonia Baptist Church in Newport, Kentucky. I'm Pastor Randall Baker. We're glad to have everybody that's that's uh, able to join us today. Uh, what kind of song you got there, Dale Edward? Hey, let's uh, let's do number 77. Uh, higher ground. Higher, higher ground. ground. Number 77. Everybody sing with us. Let's get in the right mood going in here yes, today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's good to be back, man. I tell you, you uh, you miss a few weeks, man, and you miss church. You really do. So, in light of everything that's going on in the world, I thought this would be a good one, you know, because we can get caught up in everything that's going on in the outside world, can't we? But we still, you know, we as Christians need to keep focused on pressing on to the, you know, to the mark for the prize of that high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So, let's do number 77, Higher Ground. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord plant my feet on. Struggles and problems, Junior Riley's family. 
uh, Brother Stanley Brewer's uh, mother, he's still having a hard, hard time with that. Never will get over any of that, of course. Never will. But, you know, time does lessen it. God has fixed it so that time will lessen the sting of it a little bit. But we never get over it. We never get over it. As I've, as I've talked about before, we used to go to the old folks' home with the, the veterans. And, uh, you know, we used to sing there. And I sang that song, uh, uh, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? And I saw an old, uh, we got the... You know, part about your mother and uh, an old fellow reached up and wiped a tear out of his eye. We were saying that, you know, you still miss your, you miss your mom and your sure dad and your brothers and your sister, no matter how old you get, no matter what else goes on. But, but uh, you know, uh, uh, Elsie there lost her brother not long ago, and uh, a lot of people have lost loved ones, haven't they? I might be forgetting some, and, uh, uh, you know, God knows who you are, and God can help uh, comfort you. Just lean on God. Cast your care on Him, for He careth for you. Nobody cares for you like God does, like Jesus Christ does. So, so give it, you know, give Him, give Him your cares. Anybody else got any prayer requests? Uh, also, look, one, one, one other thing, uh, Ollie. Let me just say that uh, uh, I got a text from uh, my niece Jenny uh, uh, a few days ago, and it said that uh, some missionaries, I guess that they uh, that they supported, were in Ukraine. And she asked that we pray for them because at the time uh, that she got the message from them, they were in a van trying to trying to get to where they could get away from Ukraine, and they had the bombs were going off behind them as they were as they were traveling around. So keep those missionaries and not only missionaries but the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia in your prayers right now. And hey, the whole whole world, we don't know what this might lead to. We just you know we got to be prepared and ready all the time. Ollie, you had a prayer request? Yeah. Remember Sophie, she hasn't been feeling good. She had a bad headache last night, and then Sarah said she had Sophie, you said, another one so, this morning. Okay, Sophie and Sarah, okay. And then Slade's uncle passed away. Well, it was oh, his sorry, late uncle. aunt, uh, her husband, okay. yesterday. Keep that family, another family losing loved ones. This has been a, been a rough winter, I believe. Yeah. Oh, man, Tom Lines and Stephanie said she's sick today. Okay. And uh, oh, me. I need your prayer and family. Sure. All right. Billy and her family. Elsie and her family. Uh, I did take a pretty nasty fall the other day, and I'm still a little sore, but I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, yes, Josie? Pam, remember Pam, she's got the bars. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, Stanley? Be my prayer. Okay, Stanley, his prayer list. So let's pray for Sister Geneva here, too, and keep her in your prayers. Uh, uh, as, we, as time goes on, we seem to get a little older. I don't think any of us get in better health or, or, or get feeling better as we get older, you know. I know uh, get aches and pains and uh, places we didn't even realize you could get aches and pains in. And, uh, you know, sicknesses seem to last a lot longer with us and uh, we seem to have a lot more of them. So uh, as you get older and, uh, and uh, more fragile, you know, uh, time does take its toll on us, don't it? So let's, let's keep our old folks in prayer. And, and Brother uh, Truman, he always asks for prayer for him and his family who's here. Yes, ma'am. How's William? Uh, I think William's doing okay, pretty good. He's, uh, you know, he's still he's weak and uh, never can get his strength and stuff back up. But I believe that his uh, uh, cellulitis is what's called. I think. I think that's uh, doing quite a bit better. He used to call me. He hasn't. I should call him and find out. And I will call him and find out. Yeah. Yeah, I talked to him a couple of days ago. It sounded like he sounded better. I didn't specifically yeah. ask him, but it sounded like he was pretty good spirit. Sounded. Didn't okay. sound like he's real weak or anything. You don't know what I mean, how personal. Yeah. Right. Okay. You out there? Um, just pray for the people that I work for. Okay. All right. Yes, Brenda? Uh, my brother in law, Ed Hall, he goes to see his cancer doctor tomorrow. Okay. Keep him in. And Brother Stanley there said that he has a, an MRI on his back, having a lot of back trouble. Tanya? My nephew. It's in, has been in the hospital a couple of weeks. Okay. They're trying to, he's got a lot of issues, so okay. it's, um, his esophagus, and I don't know what all, but he, they need to fix it. Well, ask God to bless him with whatever his issues are. We have a lot of issues sometimes that, uh, you know, we don't always talk about. And, uh, but God can still help with him. He can help with physical things, spiritual things, financial things, mental things. Amen. He can help with all things. He's, you know, he's a powerful God. He's not limited to the things that we're limited to. Uh, anybody else got something they'd uh, like to, uh, like the church to pray about? 
Nobody else? CA is on here. I don't know if you mentioned I'm going to mention CA. He's, uh, he's uh, CA Griffith, uh, pray for him. He's you know, got a lot of issues going on and uh, a lot of problems, but he's doing a little better, he said. But you know what? I don't think CA is a complainer. No. I believe that CA is a sick man and just don't want to, don't, and just don't complain about it too much. Amen. Anybody else? And he always asks for Nancy Combs and a couple of other folks. His, uh, his uncle, I believe. And, uh, Lucy Mays. Lucy Mays. We need to pray for, for Lucy. Joyce. and uh, Joyce. Huh? Joyce, I think you're uh, No. What's her name? Ruth. 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 Yeah, yeah, Ruth. Yeah, all of our, all of our uh, old widows and widowers uh, in the church, we got quite a few of them now. And uh, just pray that God would, would bless, them, bless them all and all of us, all of God's people, wherever they might be. Uh, they'll ask you to come up and, just, and say prayer with us if you would. And that's what we will do. We'll have any man that will come up and we'll gather around out there as we used to. Yep. And we'll, uh, we'll go to the Lord. <clears throat> if you feel like it, come on up and uh, we'll join with Dale and we'll agree with him in prayer. Uh -huh. Our Father, which art in heaven, God, we just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for another opportunity to come out to your house this morning, God, and we thank you for each and every one that you sent out to fill their seat this morning. Yeah. Lord, you've heard the request of your people this morning. There's been so many of them, and we even had silent requests there, Lord, uh, that weren't mentioned, but God, you know each and every one what was on our heart. You know our, our thoughts are far off before we even thank them, Lord, yeah. you said in your word, and we thank you that we have a God yeah. that we can take these petitions to, yeah. and a God who still hears us, and a God who's still able. To answer each and every prayer request that was mentioned here this morning. Lord, we have a lot of uh, elderly anymore, it seems like, having trouble getting around or, you know, sick or, or for one reason or another can't uh, make it out to church anymore. God, I pray a special blessing Amen. from you on them this morning, Lord, that you just uh, gather right around with them, Lord, maybe through this uh, type of social media that our message goes out on this yeah. morning, Lord, and just bless them in a mighty way, yeah. just as if they were still here with us, Lord, and we'll thank yes, you for Lord. that in advance. And God, just remember all those silent requests that were mentioned to, or, or thought of too, with the hands that were raised, Lord, just visit each and every one of them, yeah. work them out, Lord, according to thy will, and we'll thank you for that as well, Lord. God, we just pray now that you just take this time that we have together around your word here, Lord, in this little city, and and just bless Brother Randall as he comes in the, in the stand this morning, Lord, just overshadow him. God, open the windows of heaven, just uh, shower down a blessing upon him, Lord, give him the unction to preach, because you know what each and every one of us stand in need of this morning, Lord. So we thank you for that as well, God. And we just thank you once again that you've given us another opportunity to come back here uh, to your house to worship you in the spirit and in truth. And we want to pray, Lord, for all our friends, uh, they're out of the missionaries out in the field this morning. Yeah. I know uh, I, t I talked to uh, the father-in-law, one of the missionaries over there, Lord, and, he, and he, he's having a little trouble uh, with his situation, Lord, so we pray that you just visit that one as well and, and make that work out, Lord, because I know he's a, a dedicated young man and he just wants to do what you would have him to do, Lord. So visit that situation and take care of it and all the others, Lord, that are preaching and teaching in thy will and, uh, and, and in thy name and according to thy will this morning, Lord. Remember the evangelists traveling the highways. And God, we do pray for this uh, nation of ours. We pray for the leaders of it, God, that you just give them wisdom to lead us in a righteous manner is our prayer this morning. Lord, be it Republican, Democrat, whatever the case may be, God, we just pray that your influence would be on all of them, Lord, and, and help them to do what's right this 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 morning and uh and, yeah. and and would be a benefit to all involved lord and god we do pray for that situation in ukraine russia whatever the, yeah. i don't understand all the intricacies of this stuff lord but i know you don't want people killing people so yeah. i know lord that you can take care of us still you're still in charge so lord we just lift that situation up to you that you'd work it out in, in a manner that would be best for all involved yeah. in it lord and we'll thank you for that as well all right now once again just take this uh this time in your own big hands, Lord, and like I said, just uh, make it uh, make it uh, everybody uh, that, that when they leave this morning, Lord, they can say that it was good to be here in the house of the Lord once again, yeah. just as David had said, Lord, because that's what we need to do. We need to kind of shut the outside world down and just focus on, Lord, what you would have us to hear. 
what you would have us to do this morning, Lord, and help us to do that job that you've given us to do. All these favors and blessings we humbly ask in Jesus' name, and amen. 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 <laughs> Well, if you're able to, stand up and we'll take up an offering and uh, uh, get, that, get that done anyway and uh, for the offering of the church. Now, if, if you're on the video and you would like to send in an offering, you can send it in to P.O. Box 151, Alexandria, Kentucky, 41001. If you don't feel like standing up, you're, you're welcome to keep your seat, but uh, uh, we're going to start a song here, I guess. What, you, what song you got? Question 125. There shall be showers of blessing. Showers of blessing. We can use those showers of blessing. Absolutely. Rain's coming. There's going to be showers. Rain coming down. There's going to be showers of blessing. That rain is a blessing. You know? it, it is. It, it is. is. There's a reason for all of it, I'm sure. You know, God sees a reason and he knows best. So that's why I say, hey, it's good to have the showers. Ain't it? And you know, it's uh, uh, 125. One, I'm sorry, 125. What? A meeting at the church? Uh, no, we don't have to have a meeting. We'll just, I mean, I've already, I've told a couple of people about that. We do need to get a roofer in here and take a look at the, at the ceiling, at the, at the roof, because uh, some of the ceiling keeps falling back out, keeps getting wet and falling out. So we are having some problems. It's going to turn into a big, big problem if we don't get it fixed. So we do need to get some, uh, maybe we'll get some guys together if you're on the committee or the, if you're a trustee, get together and, uh, and see what you can see what you come up with and uh because we can't remember to come to to uh we gotta read the church council sure. you know we gotta we gotta get a little more diligent on our church council but you know doing the other every other month has kind of messed us up but let's not have everybody stand up too long let's go ahead and start that song day 125 there shall be showers of blessing there shall be showers of blessing this is a promise of love there shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we there shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again, over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain, showers of blessing, showers of Showers of blessings, send them upon us, O oh Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and now honor thy word. Showers of blessings, showers of blessings we Showers of blessing, oh, that today they might fall. Now, as to God, we're confessing. Now, as on Jesus, we call. Showers of blessing, showers of blessings we need. Mercy. Brother Pat 
used to say. He said, if you uh, pray for blessings, well, if you pray for rain, is actually what he said. If you pray for rain, don't take a, a, a thimble or something. Take a big old barrel or a big bucket. Or if you pray for rain, take an umbrella with you. Yep. You know, you got to remember that, uh, you know, you got to have faith that it, that it will be what, it, what, uh, you, what you've prayed for. Today's uh, offering is $366. May the Lord richly bless you for that and repay you fourfold. Uh, who else has got a song? You got a song? You ain't got one today? He stopped up. He says, well, you got to help. You guys got one? I, you know, I didn't at the time, did you? I was trying to catch my breath. <laughs> a little bit. Still a little bit uh, windy, but... Okay. You sing one, right? No, no. All right, I'm, uh, can't think of one to sing. Yeah, if you come on up here, though, we might we might sing uh, what we sang at Junior's funeral. What? Uh, <coughs> I believe Mitchell liked it pretty good. I'm kind of stopped up. Let's give it a shot. What was it? What number was it? It ain't a number. Oh, you got it on paper. Yeah, I got it on paper here. <laughs> well, that ain't it. <laughs> I can find it here somewhere. Yeah, I'm up there Huh? What is this all about? The song is a poor wayfaring stranger. Oh boy. <laughs> a poor wayfaring stranger. I'm sure I got the. We are. Huh? We are. We are strangers. Pilgrims in a strange land. Man. Just passing through. This ain't it either. <laughs> I'm about to clean this Bible out sometime or another. I'm sure I got it. You don't take fun. nothing away from it or add nothing to it, huh, Dale? No, no, no. You, well, I don't think it means to take uh, yes, junk out of, out, out of your Bible that don't add, because it, actually it was added in if I was putting it in there. Absolutely. Why don't you see if you can find it on your, on your phone or something? My phone's recording here. <laughs> oh, that's, that's right. It's in that little blue songbook, Texas. Yeah, it's in the blue Yeah, get the little song. The little blue, blue song. I got there. that one. Never mind, I got you. Throw it on there. Go ahead and get it. That's, in the, that's something else, too. He's a mess. I just want to see him go back and forth there a little bit. All righty. I'm going to leave this out so I don't... Uh... Go ahead and say something while I find this. Well, as I was saying there, though, we are... Uh, just pilgrims passing through this land ain't we? because we're supposed to be looking for a better place yes, sir. that's not built with hands the foundation whose builder and maker is God that's what we need to be looking for the old preachers used to say we ought to set our mind on immortal glory that's what we ought to be setting our, our you know a lot of times we just worry about things we can get here on this earth ain't it we worry about you know we worry about hanging on to this life just as tight as we can I'm, I'm as guilty as everybody else is if we're a Christian, we ought to be we ought to be wanting to go on to heaven. We ought to be wanting other Christians to go on to heaven. When, you know, when somebody's sick and in need and hurting and stuff, if we want to keep them, we selfishly want to hang on to them just as long as we can, don't we? We, you know, we ought to be glad to see them go on to heaven. We ought to be glad to, to see them go on to where there is no more pain, no more grief, and, and no more death. We'll never have to say goodbye again. That'll be a great day. Amen. That'll be a great day. Did you find it? I think I did. I will bring it over. I can't see it from over there. Uh, you're out of luck then. I can't always see it from right here. <clears throat> I am a poor wayfaring stranger while traveling through this world of woe. Yet there's no sickness, no toil, nor danger in that bright world to which I go. I'm going there to see my father. I'm going there no more to roam. I'm only going over Jordan. clouds will gather round me and I know my way is rough and steep yet beauteous fields lie just before me where God's redeemed 
their vigils keep. I'm going there to see my mother. She said she'd meet me when I come. I'm only going over Jordan. <coughs> I'm only soon be free from every trial my body asleep in the old churchyard i'll drop the cross of self-denial and enter on my great reward i'm going there Sing his praises evermore. I'm only going over Jordan. I'm only going over home. We sang that at Junior Raleigh's uh, funeral. We sang it at Junior Raleigh's funeral because uh, if, if some of you remember, he used to sing that song here. And Junior was an excellent singer. He was a very good singer. He did about a good job uh, on that as anybody I've ever heard. And, uh, uh, you know, the song reminds me of him. Just like some of the other songs remind me of some of the other folks here in the church. Uh, I'll not be a stranger, you know. I connect that with uh, Brother C.A. Every, every time. And, uh, and uh, Purple Road with, with uh, Uncle Buck. And, uh, you know, just, uh, just some of those old songs, they bring back good memories. And they just... Uh, Man. They just, uh, you know, as, as the old song says, they flood your soul with memories and your mind with memories and uh, good things, good memories. Memories of church are good memories, you know. I mean, I've had, I have some memories in my life that I'd like to, to erase from it, but, uh, you know, there were some good times in, in the church. Uh, good old folks, uh, you know, I, I think of, when I think of these first rows, I think of all the old, old gentlemen that used to sit up here in these front rows and... Uh, <coughs> It's just good to come here and see him, you know. It's just good to come here and see him. And then, and if y'all remember, we used to have a bench across the back of the of the of the place up here, and they'd be lined with preachers. And uh, sometimes you'd come in, sometimes you'd come in, you'd think, oh no, we're going to be here until two o'clock. <laughs> but you know, it was still good times. It was still good. It was good times to to come, and it was good to see everybody, you know, all of our Christian brothers and sisters. Go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 5, uh, chapter 25, verse 24. Chapter 25, 24 of, uh, of uh, Genesis. <clears throat> I'm going to... Some of you might remember that, that uh, a while back, I don't know, about maybe a year or two ago, I did a sermon on numbers in the Bible. And how they're used in the Bible, how, what the significance of them, and what the meanings of some of them are. And they are very important. Everything in the Bible is important. Every single thing is. Uh, nothing is there by coincidence and just thrown in to fill in space. Nothing is. We don't always understand exactly why or what things in the Bible say. But you know what we can do? And the Bible tells us to study. It tells us to study the Bible to show ourselves approved. But you know what? When we do study the Bible and we read the Bible, we can gain knowledge. We can get wisdom, we can get understanding that will help us understand other portions and other parts of the Bible. That's why God tells you to study the Bible. It'll help us to get a handle on certain areas of it. Sometimes when we read the scriptures though, sometimes when we read it, I'm guilty of it myself, we just skip over certain things that we don't exactly understand or we don't, or we don't, sometimes we just don't even realize the importance of things. And I've done this and I'm sure most of you have done this too. I've read, I've read a uh, verse or something, I thought, I don't even remember what I read. And then I have to go back over and read it again to, to see what I've read. Sometimes it's just hard to keep, to keep uh, uh, up. But, but as I was talking about, sometimes we read things and we don't realize the significance that there is much more significance and meaning to it than what just meets the eye. <clears throat> I think that most Christians about numbers, I'm not, I'm not really going to preach on numbers today, I just want to refresh your memory on something. I think that most uh, Christians realize that the, that the number seven that the number seven is important and that it, it, uh, it mentions uh, that it can mean perfection or more specifically, it means completion for something to be completed because the Bible says that God created the world in seven days. He created in seven days 
And he completed his work. He finished his work. It was perfect. And he completed it on, on the seventh day. Now he deemed that a week also would be seven days. And that the last day when it was finished, the week finished, would be the seventh or something. So, you know, that completed the week the seven days did. Uh, the number seven, by the way, is mentioned three, I mean, 735 times in the King James Version of the Bible. That's 105 times seven. And, uh, but, but as I said, I'm not going to go into numbers again today. I, I didn't mention number seven, and, and you'll see it would go on here. But there's another idea, another abstract type, type idea of the Bible that has meanings that's not always so obvious to us. And some things we just look over or just gloss over. But uh, then what I'm referring to here is colors in the Bible and how, how they are used and what they mean in the Bible. All Christians, all Christians, uh, old and young, and then most non-Christians or most non-believers know the biblical account of Noah in the Bible. I mean, that, that's worldwide. Everybody, everybody just about knows that. And how the great flood and how that God destroyed everything and everybody on the earth except for Noah and his family. So there were eight people. There were eight people then left uh, to, to start a uh, uh, newly remade life, to repopulate that earth. And after that, after the floods receded, after the waters went down and everything went back uh, to somewhat normal, God made a sign in the heavens and he said it was a covenant. He said it was a covenant between him and the earth that he would not destroy the earth with water anymore. He never did say he would destroy the earth again, folks. No. He didn't say that. As a matter of fact, he said he is going to destroy the earth once and for all. You know, for the last time will be complete. Uh, it'll be by fire. It'll be the opposite of water. But anyway, and although the earth and heavens were always alive with beautiful colors, we know that. The sky is beautiful. The ocean is beautiful. The grass, the trees, and of course the colorful flowers and all the colorful birds and animals that we all enjoy looking at. But the covenant that God set in the sky was different. It was different than the beauty of all that. It had its own beauty. We can still see it today, of course. We can still see it today. The Bible says this in, the, in, in, the, in Genesis 9, 13. He said, I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Today, we don't call it a bow, though. We call it a rainbow. We call it a rainbow, and that's because it's associated with rain. It usually comes after a rain when we see one. And although, since, since, you know, since most of us are not... not children anymore. Since we were children, we've seen rainbows in the sky. Lots of them have been. Hundreds of them, maybe. But you know, every time we see one, we're captivated by its beauty, aren't we? We are. And people point it out. Hey, there's a rainbow. Or they'll even tell people, I saw a rainbow today. A beautiful rainbow today. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's not by chance that it has seven colors in it. I mentioned the seven earlier. It's not by chance that it has seven colors in it. Now, science, and you know, we don't want to put much faith in science, but science says that there are seven basic colors. And in, in the rainbow, there's these colors. Red, uh, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And now when combined, when combined, they all make white light, they say. And then when it's all taken away, it's black. So those seven colors make all of the other colors. Any other color you can see or imagine, those seven colors make it. And since I was talking about red, I had planned on doing a, a thing on just colors, just a lot of different colors, maybe those seven colors if I could. But but as you'll see when we get here, red is the first color, and, uh, and I think it's the most significant probably. So we're, we're going to start there, and we're not going to get any farther than that today. And I don't know when, when, when if we do get back on it, but uh, we can find red in the Bible. We can find it in Genesis, and we can find it in Revelation, and all through the rest of the Bible. We can, color, we can find the color red. Red in the Bible is usually so, associated with negative things, though. Normally, occasionally it's not, but normally it is. It's associated with blood, of course, and death. Sin. And then, of course, it's associated with warning about things. Now, how they made the red at that time, they made a dye, and they made it from a worm that they found up in the mountains. That, that worm it contained a certain pigment in its body that was bright red, and they used that dye uh, from that worm. I guess it took a lot of them to do certain things. But the first time that we ever read about red is in relation to a person. It's in relation to Isaac, one of Isaac's twin sons. His twin son, uh, his twin sons. He had uh, Jacob and Esau. And uh, Esau was also called Edom. Now the word Edom means red. It actually means red. And we'll see, we'll see from uh, uh, that uh, Esau disobeyed God. And the first time we read about it, we'll see it right here. God had, God had designed it this way, that the firstborn son of Isaac 
who would have been the firstborn son of promise of uh, grandson of promise of, of Abraham, uh, that he would be the beginning of the nation Israel. The firstborn son of Isaac would have been. But, but Esau wasn't interested in the blessings of God. You know, some people are just not interested in the blessings of God. We sang that song this morning, there shall be showers of blessings where, where you're asking and you're pleading for blessings. But some people don't care about the blessings of God. Esau was one of those people he didn't care about. He wasn't interested in that. He wasn't interested in the birth, birthright. And, he, and that was just for being the first morning. He didn't really have to do anything about it. But he wasn't interested in it. In fact, the Bible said he hated it. He hated that. We're going to, we're going to read a little bit about that in a minute. In, the, in a moment here. But from the minute that he was born, he was marked. He was a marked man. We read about Cain being marked. Esau was marked right from the very beginning. Let's look here in Genesis chapter 25, verse 24. And it says this. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first one came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Right away he came out red. He came out a little different, didn't he, than most. He came out red right away. He came out with that mark on him. Uh, we're going we're to look over here. We're not going to move out of there yet. We're going to go look at uh, 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 rather Genesis chapter Still, still same chapter 25, we're going to look at verse 29. Beginning in 29, it says this, And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. It's because of the red. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Esau didn't have any idea what he was giving up there, did he? He gave up great things. Let's, uh, so we, can, we can see where Esau totally rejected the plan God had for him. And it was then given to Jacob, his brother, instead. If you reject God, the Bible makes it very clear he rejects you. Uh, the, 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 the Jews uh, rejected Jesus Christ and, and, they, and they were rejected then as God's uh, chosen people then. That red pottage, that represented the sin and rejection of God for uh, that, e that Esau had. Turn over your Bibles uh, to Matthew. We're going to turn over to Matthew chapter 16, verse 2. Matthew 16, 2. Matthew 16, 2. Red also symbolizes warning. I mentioned that earlier. It symbolizes something that you're warned of, that you'll be warned. Still today, we use it for a warning. A red light or a stop sign that warns you to stop, right? That warns you to stop right there when you come up to the cross section. And the red flashing lights of an of a, of a ambulance or a fire truck that warns you to get the heck out of their way so they can get on to where they're going to real quick so they can get to a, an emergency situation. And you know that a red flag, when somebody uses a red flag, that always signifies some kind of trouble, some kind of warning or something. When you're mad, what do you do? You see red. You see red when you're mad. That warns people not to get around you. Now, for years, people have used the, the color of the sky to, to try to predict the weather and see things. They have, they've had sayings and stuff. And in Matthew, Jesus uses this red sky. He uses it to, real, to, to illustrate that red is a warning. That red is a warning color. But also, he wants to tell the Jews something. He wants to tell them that they could discern the face of that sky, that warning. They could tell about that warning, but they completely missed the fact that Jesus, the Messiah, had come. And all that had come, but that new covenant had come. And now today we know, of course, that that new covenant was of his, was at his birth, uh, ministry, his death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But many today don't see that warning still. They don't see that warning as plain as it is in the Bible. The plain as, as, as the King James Bible makes it, they still don't, don't know it. The Jews were God's chosen people. But they rarely obeyed the Lord, just like we. You know, now we're God's chosen people. We're all our Jews and Gentiles, everybody is. But do we always obey like we should? No. We don't. We don't always do that. <coughs> uh, the, the red sky, the red sky, as big and vast as it was, you know, that represented the sins, how huge the sins and massive the sins of Israel, of Israel was. And to us and to everyone else, it's a warning to believe that Jesus Christ 
is who he said he was, and he's going to come back. And when he comes back, you know, those that are not saved are going to be called into hell, into the, into the bottomless pit that burns red with fire and, and brimstone. In Matthew, Matthew 16, beginning in verse 2, Matthew 16, beginning in verse 2, uh, we see where Jesus uh, tells them about this, and he says, uh, And he answered and said unto them, when it, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but can you, also, can you not discern the, time, the signs of the times? He goes on to say that a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given it unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. So he's warned them. He's warning them. You can see that warning sign. You can see that. But can you not see that you're going to die and go to hell? Can't you see that? And a lot of people cannot see that. Go ahead and turn over to Isaiah uh, chapter 1, verse 18. Isaiah 1, 18. Isaiah 1, 18. In the book... The Scarlet Letter, many of, many of you probably have read it. A lot of people have to read it in school. It was a young woman, and it has a child out of wedlock. And then she's forced to wear a great big scarlet red letter A for adultery on the front of her. And that's, what, that's so everybody would see that she was a sinner, that she had committed a sin. That she had to wear that around all the time so everybody could see her sin and what it was. You know, what does the Bible say? Does the Bible say that we're all sinners? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, it would be hypocritical for me to point out your sin when I know I'm the biggest sinner as anybody in here ever, ever is or ever was. And Jesus said this in John chapter 8, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. So we've got to be careful about casting stones, don't we? But there is one. There is one that is without sin. And there is one that can see our sins and, we, and, and can point our sins out. You know, we might be able to hide our sins from each other. We might be able to hide our iniquities from one another. But God can see all of our iniquity as if it were, as if it were we could wear a big red scarlet A or whatever our sin was. He can see it just that clearly. You don't need that stuff. In Luke 12, too, it says, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. But you know what? I'm speaking to my friend Junior Raleigh again. He used to say this, God's in the saving business. Amen. He's, in the, he's in the saving business. He's merciful and he's full of forgiveness. All that he requires of us is that well, we believe him and then we ask him for forgiveness. Just call on his name. That's all he requires of us. Amen. And these things are even in the Old Testament. Look in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. It says this. This is a beautiful verse here. It's a wonderful verse and it's quoted all the time. It says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be, like, be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. That's beautiful, don't you think? Uh, turn, over here to, turn over to Proverbs chapter 23, verse 29. In the Bible... Well, we'll just go down a little rabbit hole for just a minute. In the Bible, there's 25 references to the Red Sea. We're all familiar with the Red Sea there in, in, between Egypt and, and Israel. What God did at the Red Sea, it's, 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 it was miraculous. Everything he did there was miraculous. It was wonderful. Everything he did was wonderful. The Egyptians and Pharaoh were very cruel to the uh, Israelites. They made slaves of them, and they... And they, and they, and they uh, uh, and they kept them in cruel bodies for 14, 400 years or, or more. And after Pharaoh let them go, after all the things God did to him and all the, all the, all the uh, disasters that went through Egypt, and he finally did let them go, he, he's thinking to himself, why not let them go? And you know what he said? So he decided then that him and his army were going to go get them and bring them back and make slaves of them again. But God wasn't going to have that. God wasn't going to allow that to happen. God had freed them already. He certainly wasn't going to go back there. The Egyptians chased Israel. They came after them, and Israel was at the Red Sea. And when they saw them coming, you know, they were, they were fearful. But, uh, but Moses said, you know, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. <coughs> so all you got to do is just stand there and let them see the salvation of the Lord. So God parted the Red Sea, parted the Red Sea, and he let Israel go over on dry land. Now, in the New Testament, it talks about that as well. In Hebrews 11, 29, it says, By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. 
says this then. Which the Egyptians are saying to do, we're drowned. We're drowned. To one nation, that's Israel, the Red Sea was salvation. But to another nation, the Egyptians, it was destruction. It, it meant sin and destruction. It showed their sin and it, showed, and it, and it became their destruction. To Israel, of course, it, 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 it uh, uh, represented the power and the might of the omnipotent God. It showed how great, wonderful, and powerful God was. That's probably why the Red Sea was there, you know? That's probably the whole reason it was. God doesn't tolerate sin. He won't tolerate it, folks. He won't. He won't, he won't. he won't allow his Christians to sin. The Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. It will. You can't hide your sin. And, and, and I'm going to switch gears here just a minute. But we can read in, in several places in the Bible, a different place in the Bible where it warns you not to partake of uh, alcoholic drinks. And, uh, but nowhere is it more descriptive than here in, uh, in, in Proverbs. And uh, it's a very graphic description and a very good description, I would think. Proverbs 23, beginning in verse 29, it says this. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth, moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women and thine heart shall utter perverse, perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. Yeah. I think that's a good description. I want you to, we'll talk a little bit about it here more, but I want you to go ahead and move on over to Revelation, uh, chapter 6, verse 4. Revelation 6, 4. Revelation 6, 4. Now, I've never been an alcoholic, never really drank any uh, too much myself, or any really. Uh, but I've known a few alcoholics in my time. I've had a couple of brothers that were. But I think this is a perfect illustration of what an alcoholic is. Now, I'm going to get a little more specific here. We're talking about the color red, and it mentioned it twice in those verses. And I think the redness of their eyes is a physical manifestation of the sin, of their sin. And then when it talks about when it's red, when it's in the cup, when it moves itself aright, I think that red is the devil in there. Because, you know, we read about the devil, and we, we see that the devil is a great red dragon. He's a great red dragon. And not only that, but he deceives the whole world. And the Bible also says this in Proverbs about wine. It says that wine is a mocker and strong drink is raging. raging and whoever is deceived thereby is not wise. But you know, that's of the devil. They call it spirits, of course. And I don't think it's a good spirit. It's definitely an evil spirit. Many are deceived by the devil and by the alcohol. You know, a lot of times people think they're having a good time when they're having the alcohol. But then, you know, you read these stuff here, and, that, and that's a perfect description of how people are. They're beat up, they're hurt. They didn't even realize it until they get sobered up. And you know what? They, they wake up with headaches and hangovers and horrible feelings, sick and throwing up. But what does it say in there? When I wake, I'll seek it again. They can't wait to get it again. People live for the weekend to go out and get drunk a lot of times. That's a shame, isn't it? That a pity? You know, as Christians, I think we mostly, we look forward to the weekend for church, don't we? Yeah. You know, a lot of people look forward to parties. Most of the world looks forward to parties. <coughs> you know, that's usually a tragic end for them. They think they're having a good time, but it's usually, it ends tragically for them. The book of Revelation of Jesus Christ is given to John, which we call John the Revelator, and it describes the horrors, the horrors of life on earth during the seven years of tribulation. There's seven again. In Revelation chapter 6, most of the seals are open. There were actually seven seals, but, but some of the seals are open, and they unleash evil on those left on the earth after the tribulation. And those that have taken the mark, the number, or the name of the beast. Now, the Bible does say those three things. That's why I want. A lot of people overlook that. You know, everybody says, well, 666, that's the devil. But the Bible says these people could take one of three things. They could take the name, they could take the mark, 
or they could take the number. And the number we know is the number of a man, 666. But they don't tell us what the mark is, or don't tell us what the uh, name is of the beast. So a lot of people might say, hey, you know, I'm going to take it. They don't say 666 on anywhere I can see. They might take it. You know, that's another way that the devil might deceive you. Blood, when we talk about blood, when we talk about red, that certainly represents blood a lot of times. And blood can mean life. Or blood can mean death because if we lose enough blood, we can't live, can we? If we don't have enough blood to sustain the rest of our body, we can't live. The Bible says the life is in the blood. The loss of too much of our blood ends our life. But you know what? The loss of Jesus' blood gave us life, didn't it? Gave us eternal life and it gave us an eternal life in heaven. Now speaking of heaven, speaking of heaven, I said earlier that red represented sin. And the Bible said there'll be no sin in heaven. There might not be any red in heaven. I think there are going to be some uh, like uh, uh, different color stones in heaven that are red, but I don't know that the color red will be up there much because uh, we're talking about there won't be no sin in heaven, but I'll say this. What else won't be in heaven? There won't be any blood in heaven. Wow. There'll be no blood. I don't know if there'll be any red colors in heaven. It might Half the things might be read in there because it's going to be perfect. You know, whatever God makes is going to be perfect. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 50, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. So it says flesh and blood can inherit. But Jesus Christ says flesh and bone can. Flesh and bone can. The blood, sin's in the blood, life's in the blood, everything's in the blood. Blood keeps us alive here on this earth. But here in, the, in Revelation chapter 6, verse 4, it's talking about these seals that have been opened. And this particular one of the horsemen of the, of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, one of them is, uh, is this one in chapter, in verse 4, it says, And then went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him that, that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So in this case, the red horse certainly represented death. It absolutely represented death. Uh, go ahead and turn over in your Bibles to uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Romans 10, 9. Romans 10, 9. Jesus, when Jesus went to the cross, he went to the cross as flesh and blood. He went to the cross as flesh and blood. When the Roman soldier threw the spear and pierced him in the side, the Bible says that blood and water came out. You know what I believe? I believe that all the blood that Jesus Christ's body contained, I believe it ran out there at Calvary. I believe all of it did because it wasn't going to go to heaven. And because, though, because Jesus Christ's blood wasn't tainted with sin the way ours is, with sin and sickness the way ours is, His blood was able to cover our sins uh, so that it made us appear righteous before the Father and accepted us as heirs and joined heirs with Christ. And I, and I read earlier, as the Bible said in, in Isaiah 1.18, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like clamp crimson, they shall be white as wool. Jesus died for us. He died so that our blood-red sins wouldn't damn us to an eternity in hell and torments. And that, you know, that, that is only based on the fact whether you believe, whether you believe and trust in the only begotten Son of Amen. the Father. As our, as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when you trust in His holy name, and when you do that, you're guaranteed a home. You're guaranteed a home in paradise where we'll be out of the reaches of, of sin and, and sickness and death and forever. Now, Jesus, through the Apostle Paul, laid down a very, very easy to follow route to get to heaven. You guys can come on up if you want to here. He laid down a very, very easy to follow route to get to heaven. It didn't, he, gave you, he didn't give you several ways to get to heaven. He didn't say you can do it this way or you can do it that way. The world tells you that. But the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that Jesus Christ said, I am the way. The truth and life. Not me, Randall Baker, but Jesus Christ said he was the way, the truth and the life. The only way. This map, this, this route that he gave us, this map he gave us to follow is a treasure map to us, so to speak. It's a treasure map. 
But all you got to do is just follow this and you'll be able to go to heaven when this life is over. And folks, we never know when this life is going to be over. It could be any minute for any of us. It could be the whole world. Hey, if this, if this uh, thing between uh, Ukraine and Russia gets big, it could be a big uh, nuclear war that destroys the whole world. Who knows? Who knows? I don't, I don't think that's going to happen, but who knows that will or will not. But if, whether or not this world's destroyed tomorrow, we're going to all die at some point. Amen. And the decision that we make about Jesus Christ on this earth while we're here is going to matter what happens to our soul, our eternal soul, after we leave this earth. Amen. And God made it very, very clear how that you can, you can get to heaven very easily. Here beginning in, in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That seems all pretty easy to me. That don't seem like a big... Jesus Christ said, take my yoke upon you because it's easy. Now, this is what he's talking about right here. He didn't say, you know, he didn't say, go out and work your butts off and try to get yourself into hell. He didn't tell you that. Because you'll never do that. You're never going to be good enough. Only one was good. He said, we're none good. No, not one. Right. Jesus Christ is the only one that's righteous. And the only way we can have any righteousness at all is taking on his. And I've mentioned this before, but here's the first and only prayer that God will hear from a lost person. And that is... For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How about that? Is that hard to understand by anybody? By any stretch of the imagination, that's an easy, easy thing. He made it easy to understand. He made it easy to do. It wasn't easy for him. I mean, he, came, he left great riches in heaven and he came down here to earth. A place where he was persecuted, beaten, Condemned. And then he was, yeah, he was scorned. Beard was plucked out. We can read in Isaiah where his beard was plucked out. He was beaten so bad he didn't even look like a person anymore. <coughs> and you know what that, to, to me, listen folks, I, I don't know if you've heard about that Shroud of Turin before, but supposedly people say, well, this was the cloth that was laid over Jesus and when he, uh, you, you know, when he uh, uh, came back to life or whatever, it, it projected this image of him on there. It can't be Jesus Christ. You know how I know it can't be Jesus Christ? For one thing, this guy's laying here and he's got a big long beard on it. Don't Isaiah tell us that Jesus Christ's beard was plucked out? You know, the world will deceive you. Amen. The world will want you to start worshiping things like that. And that's why they tell you, this, is, this was Jesus Christ right here. This came right off Jesus Christ. So people go there by the thousands, maybe millions, and they worship this stuff. God tells us not to even worship the cross, you know. Amen. Don't worship the cross. Amen. You worship the one that was on the cross. You worship Jesus Christ and Him only. That's all that you worship. As we, as we, say, uh, as we sing this song of invitation, if God has spoken to you, we'll be glad to take it and more perfectly show you how the Bible says to be saved. As we sing. Just as I am without one plea, but
just as you are. Don't try to clean yourself up. You'll never be able to do it. Amen. You'll never get to be good enough. I can tell you that right now. Uh, my brother Joe was so worried about that that he said, I, you know, I, I still don't want, I don't want to be one of those kind of guys that say I'm saved and then I just go back and do the same old stuff. I said, so, you know, I try to tell him over and over, it's not about you. No. It ain't about you. It ain't about how bad you are. It ain't about how good you can be because you'll never be good at all. You never will be. Don't try. For one thing, if you could be perfect from your life on out, you've already sinned some point in your life. Man. You've already messed it up. So, so you know, don't even try that. They'll come on up and close us in prayer then, and, uh, and we will release everybody. All right. Let's bow our heads with it. Yeah. Heavenly Father, God, once again, we just want to thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to be here and to hear your word this morning, God. We thank you for each and every one you sent out. And once again, Lord, it's our prayer that they can all leave saying it was good to be here. Lord, I know it was good for me, and I thank you for it. Because I felt your presence, as Brother Dave said many times uh, before here, Lord, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, Lord, if we come yeah. desiring a blessing, I believe we'll receive a blessing, yeah. Lord. And I can say we did today, Lord, just, just to hear the words uh, again from the Bible, Lord, that, hey, Jesus saves is enough of a sermon because yeah. we know all that you've done for us, Lord, when we didn't deserve it. All of us were guilty. We were guilty sinners. Amen. Therefore, we had a, a destination of hell without Amen. you, Lord. And we thank you so much for caring enough to leave your heavenly estate and to come down here, Lord, and shed your blood, give your life for us so that we might have a right to that tree of life, so we might have a way from earth to heaven. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the love that you've already shown us and for all that you've done for us, Amen. Lord. Once again now, God, as we depart, help us to just reflect on these words that we've heard today, Lord, throughout this week. Bless us, Lord. Just bless us as we depart. And help us to be a light, Lord, to those around us and, and to this little community here that we're in, Lord, to anyone that we come in contact with, Lord. Help us to let them know. Help put the words in our, uh, in our mouth to speak to them, Lord, and let them know that, hey, Jesus is still in the saving business. Yeah. And you are not too late. You are not too bad. You haven't done anything too wrong Amen. until you're dead, that they still have a chance, Lord. And we thank you for that. Now, God, just once again, just watch over us as we depart. Keep us safe on the highways. And, Lord, when it be uh, your good pleasure, we pray that you just bring us back here, Lord, once again. In Jesus' name we do humbly ask and pray. And amen. 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 Thank you, folks. See you next week. Good Lord will.